got just around less than a minute to go until the closing bell. We have Scott Wren, Wells Fargo Investment Institute, Senior Global Equity Strategist, and Stephen Dover, Franklin Templeton, Chief Market Strategist here to help us break down where things stand as we wrap up the month of September and as we wrap up the third quarter. Now, we just had the breaking news a few minutes ago that the House did pass a government funding bill, sending it to President Biden's desk with the shutdown deadline just hours away. So that should help investor sentiment a bit. But you're seeing some selling action on Wall Street. The Dow, S&P and Nasdaq all under pressure. The Dow now off just over 500 points. S&P now off just around 1% and the Nasdaq in negative territory off 56. Boom, we have a closing bell, and let's see where these markets are going to finally wind up. Uh, not the strongest of days. The Dow's going to be off about 1.5%, down 547 points. S&P 500 off a little bit over 1%, down 52 points. NASDAQ down 63 points. And as you heard Shauna say, some of the sector action today, industrials were down almost 2%. Energy, which has been very strong over the last couple of months, energy was down about one and a quarter percent Let's go back to the panel and bring them in to talk about where uh, we can be heading as we uh, finish out the week. Scott Rand, let me start with you. Uh, all this talk about what's been going on with bond yields and, and you know the spending problems in Washington. We also have third quarter earnings are gonna start coming out next month, which starts tomorrow. Uh, there's a lot for people to digest. And do you think it's gonna be enough to scare investors away and just say, I'm gonna wait till November? Scott, I think you might be muted. I do it all the time, so you're in good company. Let me see if I can You got that. it. Is that good, Adam? That's good. Bring all it on. All right, great. Got to love home, at-home technology, right? <laughs> um, so, no, I think, you know, as I look at my what am I going to be afraid of list today, uh, there's a lot of things on that list. And I don't really think earnings is going to be that much of a mystery or a concern to the market. I mean, we know we're going to get out of this year with a reasonable amount of earnings growth. I think there is, though, the overriding theme of are we going to have embedded inflation? What might the Fed do about it? Um, you know, uh, is the Fed going to remain easy? You know, those types of things, you know, growth, um, what's global growth going to look like? I think those are the overriding concerns. We've had such a big run up in the market that, um, you know, to have a 5% pullback or something off the top after the market basically doubled in 15 months, uh, I think you have to put this in the right context. And while there's a lot of things to worry about, uh, many of them have a very low probability of causing a lot of long-term problems for the market. Stephen, what about you? How are you looking at this just in terms of how investors should be positioned heading into the final quarter of the year? Well, today's an interesting day. It marks the 40th anniversary of the bull market in bonds. Um, on 9 30, 1981, the 10-year yield was 15.84%. So it's been, it's been a long ride for yields to come down. And of course, um, many people have thought that yields would go up more than they have uh, for a very long period of time. So I think we're, we're in a period of transition where things are, literally are more complicated. I think we're coming off a fading of the good news and a raising of doubt. And so we hear that in the last few weeks as there's talk of stagflation, uh, the issues with the energy prices. Um, I think the real positive news is Delta seems to be fading. The consumer seems to be strong. Um, we do have these supply chain issues where the view that inflation is transitory. Um, Washington pulled through at the last minute, but it did pull through. Um, so agreeing with Scott, 5% pullback seems very reasonable, even if expected, but we're still tend to be positive on opportunities in the equity markets. Um Stephen, let me follow up on that because we've had lots of guests tell us, look, S&P 500, 4,800 uh, as the end of the year price or the target that they see for S&P 500. But I want to get to bonds because uh, a buddy of mine lives in my building, was talking about how difficult it is in bonds, even if you're looking at high yield. You know, high yield used to be, uh, it had risk, but you got the return. But now high yield, it may be 4%. It's not worth the risk. So is that driving people toward equities? I mean, there is no alternative. 
Uh, certainly, uh, Tina is probably the, one of the biggest drivers towards equity. It, it, if you have a balance between cash and equity, you have to add some uh, in, into equity. I think that in terms of corporate bonds um, and the market in general, um, if you are looking at the fixed income indexes, there's been an increase in duration over a period of time and an increase in the portion, uh, depending on the index, that's uh, in high yield bonds, which of course have a very high correlation to equity. So, so we think, and probably a lot of the market thinks that you have better opportunities investing directly in equity than in the corporate bonds and, and actually getting the beta through there. The, the quick cautionary point I'd make is when people look at their portfolio, they shouldn't think that fixed income completely especially high yield fixed income diversifies them versus equity. Scott, what do you make of what the bond market is telling us? Because today it pulled back just a little bit when you take a look at the 10 year, but we did see this run up over the last couple of trading days. Is that all Fed related in your mind? Well, Sean, I think that, you know, the, the bond market has the 10 year yield, for instance, it's been, you know, low for a long time. It hasn't been reflective of the kind of growth that we're going to see out there or the little bit higher inflation that uh, that we're experiencing, at least uh, at least in the nearer term over the next maybe 12 months or so. So I think it's natural. We've been looking for rates to drift higher. And really, six months ago, you know, if you would have asked me, Probably the last time I was on the show, we thought this year the ten-year yield would finish uh, a little bit north of two percent. That's unlikely to happen. You know, our calls now is for about one seventy-five, so we're not all that far uh, away from that right now. But you know, I think it's natural that rates drift higher uh, this year and next year. We're going to have a good growth environment, uh, even though inflation is likely to decelerate, at least based on our work next year relative to this year. So you know, rates are you know they've got a long way to go. Before before they normalize, I'm kind of cautious to even use that word. But you know, when 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 the yield runs up, um, you know, 20 20 basis points, 30 basis points, something like that. I don't think that's what you want to focus on. I think that you want to, you hopefully have been leaning toward stocks away from bonds. Uh, I think that's still the way to go. And expecting rates to normalize somewhat at higher levels than they're at right now. Scott, if I could just follow up on that, because, and it's a rudimentary question, but help us understand the people who might be buying bonds or bond funds right now, aren't they essentially betting against themselves? Because new issuance of treasuries in the coming months are going to have a better coupon. And who are you going to sell what you're buying today in the future? Who's going to buy it? Well, you know, Adam, that's a, you know, I'm an equity guy and that's a mystery question to me sometimes as well, because, you know, I've asked myself for quite a while, I mean, who, who is buying bonds in here? You've got a negative real yield. Uh, stocks look pretty good to us and have looked pretty good to us. So, you know, I, I, we've been really discouraging our clients to step in here, uh, especially on anything like treasuries. We have some interest in the middle part of the curve. Uh, we've liked pre preferreds, we've liked uh, munis, um, but there's not much much in the bond market that we really like that we've been directing clients toward. We've been pushing them towards stocks. We've been looking for yields to go higher. Um, you know, there's not a great lot of great buying opportunities here in the bond market. Scott Renna, Wells Fargo, and Stephen Dover of Franklin Templeton. Thank you to you both.